This is the ultimate interrail travel guide, 17 must know tips you need to know before you go interrailing. I spent 26 days traveling around Europe. I went to 11 cities and nine countries and it was an incredible experience straight after I left school, eight days after my final exam and I recommend it to anyone who's just finished school. Get out there, see loads of countries, see, lo see loads of cities, you will love it. I'm now a travel content creator and I create videos traveling the world, helping people to travel. So if you want to follow me on my journeys and help you guys out, then hit subscribe. Trust me, it helps me out a lot. So if you could do that, that would be amazing. Before I get started, the final two tips are about budget and the best places to go. This is probably the most common questions I get asked. So stay tuned for that. They're good. I tell you exactly how much money you need to travel in each country. Right, let's start with tip number one. What pass should you get? This is a common question because when you go on the Interrail website, there are so many passes to choose from and you're like, which one am I going to choose? And you've basically got to count how many days are you going to be traveling? Because out of that month, three weeks, two weeks, however long you're going for, you might only be traveling for five, maybe seven days of that period. So you don't need to get a continuous one month travel unless you want that real flexibility. I personally use a 22 day continuous pass and I found that I didn't actually need that and I could have saved a lot of money with the pass. Tip number two, this is the night train rule. It used to be called the 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. rule, but that is not a thing anymore. Any information on that, just forget it. It's the night train rule. It's a lot simpler and basically if you leave on one day and you take an overnight train to the next day, it only counts as one train. If you take another train on the second day, that counts as two travel days. So, but just one overnight train, that is just one travel day. Okay, tip number three. If you're looking to travel this summer, summer 2021, coronavirus is the big thing about. At the moment, we're not sure what's gonna be available, but if you click the link in my bio, I've got the latest coronavirus interrail like news, and it will tell you exactly what countries you can go to, what countries are open, and it will just give you so much more information. It's very likely that in the next year, maybe two years, that you're gonna to have to still wear masks on the trains and you're definitely gonna to have to like sanitize, hand wash, you know, keep a distance, all that normal coronavirus things you will have to apply when you're traveling still. Okay, tip number four, are you gonna go for a circular route or are you gonna go from one side of the continent to the other? And I personally started in London and we finished in split in Croatia and we got a plane back, but you can, Instead, if you don't want to take a plane, you can do a circular route. So if you start in London and you can finish in London, but this just depends on what kind of route and where you want to go. So just take into account what countries, what cities do you really want to travel to? And then you can kind of work out what kind of route you want to do. Another suggestion is finish by a beach. For example, we finished in Split and it was a lovely way to finish the trip relaxing on the beaches. So I do recommend doing that. Okay, tip number five. This is a tip which is not really interrailing, but it's use buses because buses can be cheaper than the trains and often they are a lot cheaper. Obviously they take normally take a lot longer. They're probably gonna be a little more uncomfortable as you are strapped in, but that is something to bear in mind. If budget is an issue, then maybe travel on buses and not trains. For example, you could use it on a shorter journey from like Vienna to Bratislava. If you've only got a certain number of days you're allowed to travel within the month, then use it and you could save money and you can also save one of your travel days. Tip number six is use Interrail Planner. It's a website which I will link below in the description and it basically helps you plan out the route so that you can see the map and see everywhere you wanna go and it tells you the, like the train times, how long it's gonna take, so it's really, really useful. Definitely recommend doing that. Okay, tip number seven. This is starting to go to tips about accommodation. So what accommodation should you stay in when you're interrailing? I definitely would recommend staying in hostels. This is the best place to stay. Why? Because you can meet so many other travelers. You get often get free breakfasts, there's free walking tours and so many advantages, advantages of staying in a hostel. However, Airbnbs can sometimes still be cheaper, especially if there's a few of you, splitting the price of an Airbnb can be cheaper than staying in a hostel. So if you're on a budget, have a look, see what's the best option for your budget. Tip number eight, this is about the hostels. So when you're looking for a hostel, 
make sure you read the reviews. There'll often be a score out of 10 if you use Hostel World, which is what I use. And basically it will tell you what the atmosphere is like, if there's a free pre-breakfast, if there's maybe a free drink, a bar at the hostel. And basically it will tell you everything that you need to know and you'll get other travelers' opinions about the hostel. So definitely read the reviews because it can be so helpful. Tip number nine, look at the location of your Airbnb and hostel because it could be right across the other side of the city to where you got in in your station. So you might have to walk like an hour or you might have to take a bus and that could add to your expense. So always make sure, have a look where the hostel is in the city, make sure it's close to the station or if there's a cheap bus, then you can just take that. But make sure you look where the location of your hostel is. Tip number 10 is all about budget and stuff you can do for free or really cheap in a city. Because in a city, there are loads of free stuff you can do. There's loads of free museums. You can do free walking tours. So take advantage of these, especially if you're on a budget, because you'll save money and you'll do fun things without spending any dollar bills or euros, probably euros. Tip number 11. What backpack should I take when I'm going into railing? Well, I'll tell you, you should probably have two backpacks, a 50 to 60 litre one and a day bag which you can put like a camera and it's just stuff you need for one day whilst you're in a city. Let me show you the backpack which you need. I've got them here. This backpack is what I call a lucky dip backpack. It basically is quite big and you just, the only way to get stuff is to reaching in and just grabbing stuff, yeah? This is not as good because you don't know what you're gonna pull out of there. It's literally a lucky, lucky dip drawer don't get it. Get a backpack like this, which opens all the way out. And when it's, when it's full, it's obviously not full at all at the moment because Corona. But when it's full, you can literally see everything that you have. It's just like a suitcase. And I definitely recommend getting it because it is so much better. I've used both. And the difference between the both of them is huge. Just please. Get yourself a suitcase backpack like that. It will save you so much pain. Tip number 10, two, 12. Tip number 12, food. All about food. What food should you eat? And it depends on your budget. You can obviously eat out all the time, but that's gonna get expensive. If you wanna eat cheap, cook yourself. Make sure hostels that you stay in have kitchens. Make sure if you stay in an Airbnb, it's got a kitchen so you can cook yourself and you save so much money. Also, you can go to local bakeries, go to um, like local restaurants. Don't go on the main tourist strip because they're gonna be expensive. Go down a bit out of town and you might find cheaper, more local restaurants, which are more suitable for cheap travelers like myself. Tip number 13, this is a question I get asked a lot. What, what bank card do I use? How do I use money? Do I, do I get money? Money, how do I do it? Basically, use these one of these three travel cards. Use Caxton, Revolut, or Monzo. Personally, I use Monzo. I think it's the best one. It's got the best app, and it's so easy to use. Basically, these have the best currency exchange rates, and you basically use your bank card, and you top it up, and you top up these travel cards with your bank card and it's so easy. You can basically pay wherever you go. You can ATM withdrawal fees are not a thing with these, whereas they could be with your other bank account. So definitely recommend getting a travel card, Monzo, Revolut or Caxton. Woo! We're getting on a bit now. Tip number 14. These are two apps which I definitely recommend downloading. A currency converter because if you're in Budapest and you've got Hungarian foreign or I don't know, some weird currency, you're not gonna know the difference. So download a currency converter just so you can quickly type in, see how much stuff is. And also download maps.me. I've said this before in another one of my videos, it is the best app for backpackers because it tells you little local restaurants, it's, and you can download the map, so it's perfect for traveling if you don't have data. So please, download maps.me and the currency converter. It will save you so much time and pain. Tip number 15, one five, let's go. So bring a padlock. One, because you wanna use it in hostels, sometimes they don't have padlocks, so just bring a padlock. Two, to like padlock your actual bag. And three, because sometimes in main train stations in Europe, you can actually put your bag away in a train station, lock it up, and then you can go out for the day. So if, if your train is in the evening, but you've got to leave the hostel in the morning, padlock it up in a, in a train station, in the locker, and you can save yourself lugging it around all day. 
Trust me, it's very useful. Okay, tip number 16, the best places you can go into railing. I'm just gonna have to do it from my experience and my experience traveling around Europe, but I've gotta say, Amsterdam is a brilliant one. Berlin, my two favorite are Prague and Budapest. These countries, no, I'm not American. These two cities are amazing, trust me. Please go to them. They are probably the two best, two best cities you can go whilst you're interrailing. Also Split and Paris. Split is beautiful with the beaches and Paris is Paris. If you've not been, you've got to go whilst you're interrailing with your friends or even if you're solo. Please go to Paris. Le Paris, le baguette. Baguette. Okay, the final tip, tip number 17, budget. I'm gonna put on the screen now a budget table of how much you're gonna spend in each country roughly. This is a guide, it is not you're gonna spend this much. It obviously depends on where you eat, if you eat out. So take it with a pinch of salt, but this is roughly how much you'll spend each day whilst you're traveling around Europe. So if you wanna go on a cheaper trip, stay in the cheaper countries. If you wanna go on a more expensive trip, go to the more expensive countries. Including my interrail pass and traveling for 26 days, I spent 1500 pounds. I spent roughly 40 pounds a day and I would use this as a guide for all over Europe. If you go into a mixture of countries, 40 pounds a day for traveling um, because this kind of is a budget, but it's kind of a good budget which you can work with. It gives you a bit of flexibility. In places like Budapest, you will spend less, but in somewhere like Berlin, Amsterdam, it is a lot more expensive. You'll probably be spending more than 40 pounds, but overall 40 pounds throughout Europe is a good budget to stick to. That is the end of the video. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I will leave my thing, what's it called, at Joel Friendy here, so that you can go um, follow me on Instagram and I will answer your questions. Also, please, please, please like this video because I've got more videos coming out to help you guys travel. So just like this video, it means a lot and I can help other people too. Right guys, I will see you in the next one. See you later.